I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. At a House Financial Services Committee hearing last week, Representative Rashida Tlaib spoke about housing for people living with disabilities. She said that, quote, the devastating impacts of our housing affordability crisis are falling even heavier on those living with disabilities. Listen in for more. It's now recognized for five minutes. Thank you so much, Chair Beatty, for holding this really important hearing. Um, as everyone testified, uh, housing is uh, foundational uh, to many of our neighbors, but particularly for many of our neighbors living with disabilities. As many of you have heard, I represent um, 48217 zip code in Michigan's 13th Congressional District, which is one of the most polluted zip codes in the entire country. It's sandwiched between one of the largest freeways and the only oil petroleum refinery in the state. Um, the toxic air many of my residents breathe has directly contributed to many uh, to, to much of the highest rates of cancer and asthma in the state. Um, and for many of us, this is the definition of a frontline community. And over the past three decades, uh, Chairwoman, low-income Americans have become increasingly concentrated in four neighborhoods like 48217. Um, we know that individuals with disabilities uh, experience greater levels of poverty, as we heard today and lower levels of wealth than those without disabilities, um, requiring an average of an additional $17,000 per year to obtain the standard, uh, same standard of living for many of us. Uh, meanwhile, individuals with disabilities are underemployed and underpaid, as again, many have testified. That means uh, that the devastating impacts uh, of our housing affordability crisis are falling even heavier on those living with disabilities. For me, environmental justice is disability justice and economic justice is disability justice. So, uh, you know, uh, Carrington, when it comes to purchasing a home, uh, many individuals with disabilities are underbanked or, or credit invisible. invisible. Uh, what policy recommendations, I know folks talked about capital and so forth, but really, you know, anything that we could be doing on our end to improve the access to credit and opportunities to purchase a home and build well. Thank you so much for this question, Congresswoman. Uh, so I, I want to start and say that rather than just look at income or credit of the individual, can a mortgage company uh, look at an individual's story? For example, um, an individual may be someone who had a full-time job with a high salary and had an accident, and now they're, uh, they're on SSDI. Does the mortgage, mortgage company understand the person's story? Um, SSI, SSDI is a stable income source, whether the person has a settlement agreement or other sources of down payment assistance. If the mortgage company is solely focused on employment income, getting a loan will be hard for, as we've uh, made clear today, a disproportionate amount of people with disabilities who have other sources of income although severely low, that may be still sufficient to help contribute to a mortgage. If an individual needs home modifications, there might be a separate grant or deferred payment loan, making the loan from the mortgage company more affordable. I especially want to you know, lift up the income, the importance of companies to understand the income and asset situation of many people with disabilities, but also that there is an opportunity for more people to use their housing choice vouchers um, for home ownership. It is rare that this happens, but HUD can incentivize public housing authorities to choose to include home ownership as an option in more areas. There are also home ownership models like limited equity co-ops that provide home ownership for low-income people, including people with disabilities. And HUD should be doing more to promote these models. And the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac should be finding ways to incentivize banks and other lenders to finance these examples. No, and that is so important, you know, because much of our, our housing stock in my district um, is, you know, valued less than $100,000. And we require, you know, very a, a lot of repairs to be brought to level. And one of the things that we did, and I know the chairwoman was a big supporter of this, is we introduced introduced a small dollar uh, mortgage bill, um, and you know, to really try to push our federal government to play a bigger role because much of the uh, traditional banks are they're not loaning um, because it's not profitable, not loaning to homes that are less worth less than a hundred thousand dollars. So, question to you, I mean. Again, many of our families are already facing many barriers to obtaining a small dollar mortgage, let alone additional financing to actually repair it and make it safe and accessible. Do you have any recommendations? I mean, it sounds like you're getting there where uh, 
we need to move towards that direction. But Ms. Kennington, like one of the things that I really want to to look at is um, how do we get our government to push and allow us because that's what they were created. FHA was created specifically for this to push the small dollar mortgages out um, and especially prioritizing those living with disabilities. Well, let me just say thank you um, that, you know, there's as the programs I mentioned before need more investment, need more prioritization and HUD has taken leadership um, on on increasing home ownership, but disability equity must be embedded within those solutions. And we need disabled people at the helm of HUD um, and other critical agencies to help make that happen. Thank you. Thank you so much, I yield. Thank you. Next, I recognize the gentlewoman from Texas, Ms. Garcia, who I'm also honored 